We are live. We are live. Oh, not sure, <laughs> not exactly sure what we're doing over here. This is our first one, so please bear with us. We are live. I'm so excited to have my guest today, uh, Megan Barry, um, with Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate. The website's luxuryrealestate.com, and uh, I've attended several of your events. Uh, you guys have an amazing network. Um, so uh, I want to do my best to kind of give the background of how I see the benefit of who's who in luxury real estate. And I'll have you share a little bit more about uh, you and your title and, and your company. But uh, there's a lot of great uh, brokerages out there, both large franchises and independents. And, and I'm always telling agents, I call it the principle of slight edge. Agents are always looking for something different, unique to bring to the table. Right. Um, not only you know, as an agent, but also, hey, when I go on that that listing appointment and I'm up against, you know, XYZ Realty or big franchise or, you know, Johnny Rockstar luxury agent, you know, I'm always trying to bring more value and teaching agents to bring more value to the table. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, who's who in luxury real estate, luxuryrealestate.com. For those of you that don't know, go check it out. It's a great platform. And there's, there's other great third party, uh, affiliations and groups out there. But one of the reasons I love luxuryrealestate.com and who's who is you can be with a large franchise or you can also be with an independent and some others, you know, limit, you have to be only with independent or maybe you have to be with only a franchise and yours doesn't. So I probably didn't do it any justice, but <laughs> give me a, you know, fill me in, give uh, everybody that maybe isn't familiar with who's who and luxury real estate, um, more uh, information on the history on john brian lash and and yeah. uh, the url luxuryrealestate.com it's the it's probably the premier url out there well we hope so that's the point right yeah absolutely <laughs> so, yeah we we've been in business since um 1986 um before the internet was important but back at that time um the, our founder, our chairman, John Brian Losh, knew that there was a need in the industry to connect people together. And um, over the years, we've evolved into a website. Um, we have networking events. We have a con. We have multiple conferences throughout the year, a ski trip in Europe, um, a chance for people to get together and network. But the website has also become almost an entity unto itself. Um, and and those sort of remain the two things that are probably the most important to the participants in our network are the website, luxuryrealestate.com, and the network of people, people that we've brought together. Um, and the facilitating meetings at, um, at our conferences and over social media and that sort of thing is what we've sort of evolved into doing today um, to, to make sure that those connections stay strong. Um, and like you did mention, we are not, um, we are not a specific type of network. We offer opportunities to agents and companies um, that are franchises, independent, big and small. Um, so we run the gamut. And the theory behind that, the sort of um, mission behind that is that we, we want people just to be able to connect with the best, um, regardless of what kind of brand they're a part of. That's awesome. And so I've been to, I think three or four events and you guys traditionally have an event in the fall, an event in the spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, can anybody be a who's who in luxury real estate member as an individual agent? And then, of course, there's also office uh, membership. Talk to, right. talk to me a little bit about that. You don't have to necessarily go into all the specifics, but keep it, uh, you know, let me, let me know your thoughts on how one would go about that. So we do offer opportunities for agent level membership, um, but honestly, company level membership is, is sort of our wheelhouse. Um, the, um, the opportunity for um, people to be a member is contingent on their um, is contingent on their sort of um, experience in the luxury sector. So theoretically, yes, anyone can become a member, contingent on whether they've been um, participating in luxury sales for a significant amount of time. Okay. Um, and that's it's really it's really market dependent. It's um, it's it's hard for us to really pinpoint. Um, you know, price points or number of transactions or total volume of transactions or anything like that, just because market to market, it is really dependent. Um, also, we deal with people throughout the world. So, you know, um, a luxury property in Estonia is very different than a luxury property in Beverly Hills. Absolutely. And, and um, usually I start out, you know, I have a podcast called Luxury Listing Specials, which you've been on. And so we usually start out 
a little background on who I am. So again, those of you that are watching streaming on various platforms, my name is Michael Lofito. Um, I am the author of the book, Luxury Listing Specialist, and I'm the founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist designation and podcast. And for our designation, uh, Megan, and you've heard me present before, but for those of you that haven't, for our designation, we define luxury as home prices that are three times the average sale price for your given market. So um, there are various websites and platforms and franchises that define luxury as a million dollars and above. Right. Uh, you know, who's who in luxury real estate, I believe your threshold's 500,000 US so dollars and above. Yeah, that's our minimum. So um, it's, a minimum. it's a minimum threshold for putting a property on the website. Um, however, we have, um, we work with each individual member given the market that they're in and decide where an appropriate threshold is for them. Um, ordinarily, uh, 500 doesn't get you a lot <laughs> in a true luxury market. Like sure. for example, Aspen, if, if you go to Aspen, I, I don't know if there is a property on the market in Aspen at 500,000. So, sure. so our members in Aspen um, put, that, put that threshold a bit higher just because yeah. that's appropriate for that market. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, you know, I, I shared this story, I think, yesterday when we did the training for the Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate, but I was working uh, with a friend of mine, Matt Fagioli. Some of you guys know Matt from uh, the Explode conferences, and we did a training uh, in November in Kokomo, Indiana, and I, I've never even heard of Kokomo, Indiana, yeah. and the average sale price was $80,000 in Kokomo. So, again, based on the 3X <laughs> principle that we teach, 80 times 3, you know, 240 or called 250 for simplicity and above yeah. would be considered luxury in Kokomo. So again, right. sounds like you do take uh, into account various markets, various price points, as you mentioned, right. 500,000 won't get you anything in Silicon Valley or Aspen. Uh, so mm -hmm. those properties wouldn't make your website, but 500,000 in Kokomo, Indiana would right. be a mansion perhaps. And it, and it, it, there are instances like that one per se that, um, you know, we do, we do forgive a bit on price point depending on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that's the appropriate thing to do is, yeah. you know, a three or four hundred thousand dollar property in some markets is the very best. And and that's true for pretty much any market, regardless of price point, will have the street or the neighborhood that everybody wants to live in. Right. Sure. Yeah. I was talking with a group of agents from Italy yesterday and, you know, they they were trying to wrap their mind on the price point. Uh, concept of defining luxury because you know in different regions different parts of the world it's really you know the amenities and the location right. more defined luxury but again on syndication and various websites you know there has to be some kind of formula um, and uh, you know you guys do take it into account um, mm -hmm. so I have my list of questions here that uh, I wanted to ask you so I want to make sure that I um, <clears throat> I stick to to some of those and um, one of those would be um, you know we are luxury lunch and learn is the, the name of this new series and of course uh, I work with clients that are you know first-time home buyers first-time sellers we have members on our team that work with you know rentals we, we want to help anybody right so it's not just you know we're, we don't stick stick our nose up so we're in it to help people and um, but I do have various team members that work with buyers and that sort of thing. But my point is, uh, we have people on this training that perhaps might dabble in luxury here or there or never sold luxury. Um, in your opinion, um, any words of advice for agents that are looking to break into luxury? Now, I know here we are during the COVID-19 Corona time. This is right. a whole <laughs> different animal. So perhaps, yeah. you know, April 10th, uh, we're not necessarily talking about today for this question but you know when things digress a little bit and uh, hopefully we can go back to normal I know I saw that Dr. Fossey yesterday said he doesn't think people are going to go back to shaking hands I hope that's not the case but yeah. um, you know hopefully <laughs> things go back to normal and when things do go back you know a little bit more to normal and and social distancing lapses a little bit um, what words of advice would you have uh, Megan, for an agent, maybe a team leader, or could be a broker owner that's known for more entry-level properties, uh, what would be your advice for them looking to break into luxury? Well, it's it's a really interesting question, particularly given what's happening in the world today. But I think that if you think about it um, in terms of maybe six months ago, <laughs> yeah. you know, when when things were normal, whatever normal is, 
Um, you know, I think being a luxury agent is something that, you know, we see so many of these shows these days, these celeb celebrity real estate agents. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easy to be born into that. If your parents have a lot of money or your friends have a lot of money, it's easy to just sort of fall into it. You know, easy. What's easy. Right. Um, for some that it just is what they do because they live in those places and they know those people for some people that it's just what they have fallen upon. But for the agent who isn't necessarily in those circles or, um, you know, ha doesn't have access to that sort of lifestyle, I think a, a real knowledge of the market is essential. Um, yeah. They need to know the stats on the luxury homes in their area. They need to know what different parts of their marketplace are true luxury. Um, I also think that they really need to be working their network because if you're young, if you're 22 years old or 26 years old and an agent, your network is probably comprised of a lot of young people as well. And generally speaking, young people may not necessarily be able to afford homes in the luxury sector right away, but they may at some point. And if you farm that network, if you work your network over time, those people can become luxury buyers. Um, the other thing too is I think that um, having really good mentorship is important. And I think that um, you know some really great agents have started their careers by being the assistant of a really good agent or being um, in a company with some really strong agents and being, being able to be around other people who list and sell at a high level and also um, have very high expectations for themselves is a really good thing. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's important to, um, to sort of think about like what, what do people really want in a, a luxury buying and selling experience? And I think that, that's true for pretty much any industry. You know, you have to have top-notch marketing. You have to have top-notch communication skills. You have to have top-notch sort of presentation at all times. Um, you can't just expect it to kind of fall in your lap. You have to do the work. Yeah, that's, those are a lot of good golden nuggets you shared there. So first off, you talked about your network, right? I, I, t I say all the time, iron sharpens iron, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're yeah. around uh, better agents, they'll, they'll lift, you know, lift the tide, so to speak. Uh, the other aspect is knowing the numbers and knowing your market. So some tips what we give to agents all the time is, you know, go to broker open tours uh, of high end and luxury properties that are in the markets that you serve or you want to serve. Right. And right. become familiar with price points and finishes and and, you know, perhaps reach out to that agent and ask, hey, would you mind if I did some kind of you know Facebook live video? Um, and I tagged you as a listing agent and I put the website in there, you know, again, remember what's in it for that listing agent, right? So that's, right. you got to remember that when you, you approach them. So if you share with them that, hey, we're going to promote, hopefully bring a buyer, but get some exposure to, to my sphere and my friends on social media and we'll tag you and tag the website, you know, that's one way you can do it. You can work other people's open houses as well. So those, those are really good points. So thank you for that. Sure. Um, my next question for you um, is, um, there we go, is um, any words of advice for offices or large teams that are looking to launch luxury divisions? So again, when I launched our designation four years ago, it was in Dallas. I'll, I'll never forget. It was March 31st. Uh, it was a it was actually at a studio movie grill. Mark Wolf with uh, D Remax DFW and Associates had a hundred of his agents, and you know he's a Remax franchise, and he just wanted his uh, agents to have a little bit additional support. And uh, it wasn't a knock on Remax and Collections because they do a great job. And I'm going to have Ann Miller on a future show, uh, but but they just wanted some additional support and training, and so again, do you have any words of advice for a large team or brokerage? that maybe doesn't have a dedicated uh, luxury division? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do. Um, I think some of the best practices that I've seen from companies that we work with, um, they, they allow those agents to, you know, and kind of like your, your, your comment on iron sharpens iron, um, they allow those agents to, to have a lot of um, connection and um, providing opportunities for those agents to get together, you know, the agents who are working in luxury, but then also the ones who want to, um, to have brainstorming sessions, to have connection points, to network with each other, um, to discuss individual markets and listings and things like that. It's really important to keep that connection. Um, also, what I was saying as well about individual agents, I think 
having top-notch marketing and having top-notch support for those agents is really, really important because when you look at like what are the what are the what are the ways to sort of maximize um, agents? If if they're working at their highest and best use, which is selling, they are not dealing with marketing. They're not dealing with transaction coordination. They're not dealing with all the logistics that um, that can bog them down. Um, you know, managing their CRM and all of that. Like have have the support in place to make sure that that um, that sort of administrative layer is taken care of so that they can get out there and, and make the numbers and be the rainmakers that they are. Um, because I think that, you know, a lot of agents really struggle with, um, with that, that tension of, okay, I'm, I'm a good agent, I'm a great agent, at what point do I get an assistant? At what point can I get this person to come in and help me so that I can go from here to here? Um, and I think that if, if there's a, a mechanism to support them so that they can take that next step, um, you know, the sky is the limit. Um, but then getting back to sort of that, that internal company networking, um, and also what I was saying before, the mentorship, the leadership, I mean, having people to support you and to help you and to help you brainstorm and get you from point A to point B is really, really important. And I do know that, um, you know, some companies have, every company has a different philosophy on coaching. Um, some companies have a very specific plan within the company on um, mentorship and coaching. Um, and some companies allow agents to seek it externally. Um, so I think, but I think that having that mechanism in place to sort of hold you to your goals is really important, whether it's internally or from an external source, um, so that you are sort of being accountable for um, where you are and what you want to be. Um, and I think that, you know, goal setting is extremely important. And I think that, you know, I mean, all of us, everybody's like, oh yeah, sure, I'd love to live on a yacht and do whatever, but you know, you, ha you have to sort of think about, okay, why do I want that? Why do I want to, do I just, do I want to be a luxury agent just because I want to be rich? Or do I want to be a luxury agent because I, I like bigger houses and I like fancier houses? You know, there has to be something behind it more than just, I want to make more money. Um, sure. Because I, I think that, you know, you talk to people who are looking for new jobs and they're like, well, I just want to make more money. And it's like, well, it has to be, has to be, more than just that. You can't yeah. just say, oh, I just want to make more money because honestly, like you just want to make more money. You may not want to be a luxury agent because it's a lot of work, you know? Longer <laughs> sales think, cycle too. Yeah. And I think that um, sometimes working on like transactions, like just hammering out deals, um, you may make more money doing that than you do selling higher end homes. <laughs> yeah. But you, you bring up a good point. So one of the things we teach agents is diversification the diversification of their portfolio. So yeah. just like if an agent won the lottery, right? And they went to their financial advisor, their financial advisor, just like the pie chart, right? Would say, hey, some long, long-term long investments, short-term, high risk, yeah. low risk, some liquid cash. Same thing with real estate. You know, if the entry level or starter homes and average price homes are what paying the bills, great focus on that, but just add some to the high end and luxury. And and at some point, maybe you do really well at that and you're, you're able to focus only on that. But it it's definitely is very difficult for a newer agent, a newer brokerage to really focus on that niche if that upper end 10, 15 percent of home prices is what we consider a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, you think especially in in times like this, um, you know, I mean, we're in, we're in a bit of a crisis situation around the world right now. And it's, it's a lot of people have um, mentioned that it's akin to like wartime and, you know, huge stock market crashes and huge, huge things that impact society as a whole. Um, and I think that, you know, we all have to think about like, what's our bread and butter? You know, um, you know, we can think about what, you know, what's, what is a, what does a luxury division look like six months ago? What does a luxury agent look like six months ago? But what does that look like now? You know, and, and, and those bread and butter, you know, the, the, like they say, you know, your portfolio right now, everybody who has a lot of cash is pretty happy that they have a lot of cash because mm -hmm. things are tumultuous. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's, I, I think it's important to think about like keeping, keeping that bread and butter healthy so that you can diversify. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you talked about goal setting. I mean, here we are, April 10th, uh, 2020, you know, let's just, you know, I saw a meme out there that, you know, leap year, right? Uh, we had leap year this year, 29 days in February. Uh, March seemed like 300 days. And for some people, April seemed like five years. But my point is, right. if you had your goals written for 2020, 
you might have to readjust those goals, right? I mean, we're about about a third of the way into the year, right. and uh, and so you might have to readjust those goals uh, based on you know COVID nineteen, Corona, and um, and so hopefully people's priorities. You know, that's one good thing about this, mm -hmm. right? It's hopefully people can appreciate you know some things, and we'll get to a question a little bit later on a, a new kind of series we're talking about when at home, which I'd love to get your um, thoughts on that, but um, all, you know, just some really good nuggets there. And, and by the way, um, feel free, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, to type in a question uh, at the end. Um, I can't see the Facebook questions, but my assistant's going to uh, share some with me, or you guys that are on the Zoom, you can go ahead and chime in. Christina uh, uh, Juarez, you had a great question, which I'll answer at the end as well. So feel free, guys. We want this to be interactive. It'd probably be more interactive towards the tail end then, just because we have a lot of questions. We want to make sure um, yeah, this is our first training and we're starting. Megan's doing an awesome job. Um, you know, so talk to me a little bit about your network. You might not have the data totally memorized, but you know, how many mm -hmm. countries uh, are LRE members in or you know, how many agents or, or brokerages do you have any uh, anything you can share because the second part of my question is going to kind of tie into some best practices during this sure. unique time period um yeah we have about 400 and 400 to 450 current members um we're in gosh, by current members offices offices and or agents um okay. for the majority of members are companies yeah. So um, in, in it, that can be a company of two or a company of a thousand. Um, sure. So all told, our membership is about um, 130,000 agents. So some of those companies are quite large. Some of those companies are small and some of them are individual agents. Um, we, we actually, we usually work with companies. Companies is kind of our, like I said before, like our sure. real house. Sure. It's, easier. So it's over a lot easier to work with a, a company as a whole. Over 125,000, um, uh, 130, you said, over 125,000 yeah, yeah. agents are under the, the, the who's who umbrella, so to speak. Right. And I'd say about 75% about of our members are in North America, and then about 25% are outside of North America. Okay. Um, usually like Europe, Oceania. Um, there are certain parts of the world that it's a little harder to sort of sure. tap into. <laughs> like sure, sure. Parts of Africa, we don't have a lot of content, but you know. Sure the way it is. So. Sure. And um, so that, that, okay, that, that was very good. So my, my question is with your network, and I know you, you had a good friend of ours, Jim Wahlberg, um, mm -hmm. from San Francisco. He was on a podcast of mine. Um, you guys started these, these trainings, but um, are, are any of your members doing anything different or unique uh, during this, uh, you know, unprecedented time um, right. to, you know, to bring value to their clients? you know, either sellers or buyers or past clients. Uh, that's one of the, the questions that we want to consistently ask just to get some different perspectives. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Remax Integra has been a big client of ours and we're going to be doing a training for them. And one of the things they asked me is, hey, you know, we know, you know, some of the basic answers that a lot of people are seeing in the Zoom, but is there anything different or unique or something mm -hmm. that just seemed, um, you know, well received within the LRE network that maybe... Right an agent sharing or doing or company or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think, um, you know, one thing I, before I get to the answer for this question, one thing that I've observed during this time is that the average level of comfort with video and web conferencing has, has risen. And I think that, um, and this is what I've seen, you know, I mean, everybody's doing these zoom meetups with their happy hours with their family and whatever. And, sure. you know, I mean, my mother and family members in the past, they've often been like, oh, just call me, just call me. But now they're like super excited to see everybody because some of us look far away and we don't always see each other all the time. And it's really fun to kind of get on a call and be like, oh, what are you guys having for dinner? You know, and all that. But um, I think the average comfort level with it has just gone up because people realize that they have to do it. Um, and it's, it's no longer a, am I comfortable with video conferencing? Am I comfortable doing a personal video and posting it on Facebook. It's like, this is just what everybody's doing now and we all have to just get on the horse, right? Um, but Baptism think, by fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But I think what's, what's good about that is that um, people have realized that 
yes, you can spend a heck of a lot of money on very well choreographed video. You can get drone footage. You, there's so many things that you can do and so many ways that you can spend a lot of money um, to market a property or to market a company. And I, but I think that like, we've all become okay with, I mean, here I am, I'm sitting in my kitchen, like, you know, I'm drinking a glass of water. Like we're, I mean, we're, we're being real. You know, sure. we're talking about luxury real estate, but we're being real. And right. um, I think that that sort of level of, that level of um, the, the, the sort of like, like the, the gloves have come off, the, 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 the shields have come down. People are just, they're in it and they're okay with that. Yeah. Um, getting to specifics about what people are doing though, um, I've heard a lot of people who are, you know, this is the time where you still have to market yourself. You still have to market property. But you have to do it in a different way. And one of the one of the really fun things that I heard of someone doing was they're taking old videos, old virtual tours of homes, and they're putting new sound over it with more personalized walkthroughs. So instead of instead of just like some lilty music in the background as you sort of sweep through a grand entryway into a living room and dining room and a beautiful view or whatever, they're saying oh, hey, Scott and Marcy, can't you just see little Johnny playing basketball in the front yard here? And they're making it super personal, which I think is great. Um, I also think that um, when it comes to like touch points, we talked about networks. Um, this is a really important time to talk to people and to just be with people as much as you can be with them. You know, and I think, cause I think that like, even if you're not trying to list or sell a home for someone right now, they really appreciate just the, Hey, how's it going? You know, how are you doing? And I, you know, I, I, we've all seen these memes on the internet and jokey things right. that people text each other. And, you know, and like I had a little text with, um, I have a little group of friends that I text with. And um, one of them just said the other day, and she's, she's younger, she lives alone. And, you know, she's kind of like one of my young hip friends and keeps me young and fun. Um, but she sort of texted like, and she's the one who's always like the, the, she's kind of like the galvanizer. She's like always wanting us to do stuff. And, um, and so she sounds of, like, the, sounds like the troublemaker, the fun one of the group. Yeah, huh? A little bit. Right. Yeah. She's <laughs> like the young fun troublemaker. But so she, she texted everybody and she's like, how are you guys doing? Like, I need a hug. I could use a hug, you know? And I was like, Oh my gosh. This so she is the one who's always like the strong, fierce one. And, and yeah. I was like, I want to give you a hug too. I miss hugs, you know? And it's like, you miss that personal connection sure. and, and being, being the one to like reach out to people, people just really appreciate it. You know, just uh -huh. like, Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? How are you, you know, and especially like those families who are homeschooling and having multiple people work from home and dealing with all the chaos that is everybody in the house at the same time. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to just say, yeah, we are in this together. You know I mean? In, right. Instead of just kind of blasting it out there, just keep that personal connection. People really appreciate it. Personal. That's great. Great advice. Um, appreciate that. All right. Uh, let's move on. I got a couple more questions and uh, then we'll open it up for any Q and a, um, you know, during, and I, I, I know the answer, but uh, based on um, me doing a training yesterday, but is who soon luxury real estate offering any additional training and support for your members during the, this time? And if so, um, you know, I, I know you're doing some online trainings because yeah. I did one for your members yesterday. Yeah, um, but um, we, yeah, we love. Um, well, one of the, one of the things that I that I really love about working for Husu is that we um, we're 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 kind of in startup mode all the time. I mean, we are we're pretty nimble. Like, we're not a very big company. Our staff is all very. Um, innovative and like they're they're ready to go like if we have a great idea and we know we can do it we'll jump on it we'll do it um and i think that we um you know we've we've been working from home for like a month now because we're based in seattle so yeah you were was, one you know, of the first yeah, we've, all been, yeah. we've been doing this for a while but we actually have quite a few people who are um who are pretty um you know comfortable with it you know and we we, we made the transition pretty easily so our team is is they're they're kind of just doing great. Um, but we have, we have pivoted a bit to offer things that are a little bit more pertinent to people and relevant to people right now. Um, one of the big, uh, the big impacts that we have with our network are our events. You know, like you mentioned before, we ordinarily would be having an event in a week and a half. We can't do that now. Right. <laughs> you know, and so it's, what's hard is that those are really critical touch points for us with our clients. And 
really critical touch points for those members to see each other and connect. And so we decided that we needed to just create opportunities for them to get together. And we've done a series of different um, educational webinars and like open mic kind of webinars where people can just talk and share and be like, you know, in my state, because it's all very state to state, country yeah. to country. I mean, we've had people from Italy saying, this is what I'm doing because I can't leave my house. We've had people from California saying, this is what I'm doing now. And this is what I was doing last week before we were deemed essential, you know? And so it's, it's sort of, it's this evolution of like just keeping people to be, in, in uh, keeping people connected and enabling ways for them to talk to each other. Sure. Oh, that's a great point. All right. This next one, fill in the blank. So fill in the blank. In your opinion, when the shelter in place is lifted, the agents and or the offices and teams that will thrive will have blank in common. Um, I would say that they will have their ducks in a row in common. Um, I think that this is the this is the time where um, we are, you know, depending on where you are, country, city, state. Um, you have, there are different parameters for what you're able to do and how you're able to work right now. So I think that, um, you know, everybody's joking about like, oh, I'm so bored. I've watched everything on Netflix. And it's like, who is bored? Like, there's so much to do. Like, I feel like I'm more busy now than I've been in, you know, and, um, know. you know, I, yeah. And it's like, it's like, this is the, this is the carpe diem moment for a lot right. of people. This is the seize the day. This is the. Do you have your CRM in order? Do you have your database together? Do you have your connection points set up so that you're, you know, this is like the point where you can take a breath because you're not listing and showing property all day. Mm -hmm. You can get back to work in your office with your team and lay everything out so that when this bottleneck happens, because it's gonna happen, I mean, there's gonna be a point where the world opens back up again and everybody gets back to work and the people that have to buy or sell are going to have to buy or sell and you have to be ready. And those yeah. people who have everything, they've laid the groundwork so that they are ready um, after continuing to do what they can do when we've hit this pause button, um, those are the ones who are gonna float to the top. And it's just like 9-11 or just like, you know, when the stock market drive, really have it together are going to float to the top and those are gonna be the best agents. Those are going to be the top producers. Those are going to be the luxury agents. Yeah, I mean, it's the basics, right? I mean, football it comes down to the fundamentals, blocking and tackling, right? And right. and it's not fun sometimes as a former football coach teaching the basics. People want to work on the trick plays and all these other things. But the, the, the fundamentals are, are what builds championship teams and, and rock star agents. So working on your database, segmenting your database, you know, I like doing A, B, C list, right? A are my rock stars. I touch them differently, more frequently. B is the next list and then C is everybody else. The other aspect that you brought up is, you know, I'm coaching an agent right now in Orlando. She did a lot of REOs and she doesn't have any traditional listings and she wants to break in to sell luxury. So I'm coaching her on that. And, you know, we have 16 modules in our designation class and she was having a difficult time finding time to go through it. And, and I just, I told Adriani, I said, Hey, listen, here's, this is the time to do it. Like, you know, you're not going to be doing it when you're busy, when quarantine time is lifted, because you haven't done it up to this point. So you got to do it now, right? So right. work on, on those fundamentals, those things that maybe, um, you know, aren't fun to do. And there's a new workout. I'm an Orange Theory fitness guy. And so I've kind of been going nuts as they're all closed, of course. But there's a new uh, rival to Orange Theory fitness, and it's called Eat the Frog. And Eat the Frog is a military term that basically refers to do the thing that you dread the most, get rid of that and do that first thing in the morning and right. so that you can go on with your day. So if that's cleaning up your database, you know, handwritten notes, whatever it might be, eat the frog first thing in the morning. Otherwise you'll never get around to getting around to it. Yeah. I, I do think that, um, that one of the things that can help with that is the master of your schedule, you know, and I think that particularly at this time when people feel kind of overwhelmed, you know, if you're, if you're a spouse and you've got kids or whatever, and you've got to do school, block time, time for yourself, the kids, for the spouse, like it's structured so that everybody knows what's happening. You know, this person needs to close that door. This person needs the Wi-Fi. I mean, my husband and I are kind of 
on a daily basis, we are duking it out for the best Wi-Fi. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's a complicated- You got the prime spot right now in the kitchen, right? The yeah, prime exactly, spot, you I got them. <laughs> so that, you kind can. of, you kind of answered one of my questions that I, I want to start out because I am a big believer that, you know, if if things are better at home, you'll do better as a real estate agent. You'll be better as yeah. a broker owner. You'll be better. So I'm starting a, a, a consistent question. We'll probably start a Facebook group called Win at Home. You know, mm -hmm. win at home. And uh, it's all about being, you know, better significant other, better spouse, you know, better parent. Um, so some of my guests are going to have kids. Some of my guests might have, you know, family members staying at home with them, uh, you know, mother, father, et cetera. But, uh, it, would that be your suggestion as far as winning at home is, 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 is scheduling and time blocking so that everybody's expectations are, um, in line? Yeah, I think, I think it's, um, you know, the communication factor behind that is what's really important. You know, um, it, I think that also, um, just for me, like, if I'm just looking at myself, I, like you were talking about your orange theory, I, I have activities that I ordinarily would do. And um, it is very frustrating to me that I can't go to my rowing club and I can't go to my yoga studio and I can't do all those things that I really enjoy. Um, but I can do yoga on my deck in the sun or I can go for a run in the middle of the day. Like I'm not usually a midday exerciser in my regular life because I, get to work and I'm on and I'm at work. Like that's just kind of the way that I do things ordinarily. But one thing I've really been enjoying during this pause button that we've hit is that I can exercise in the middle of the day and it's kind of nice to do that. It's kind of nice, sure. especially, you know, and everyone makes jokes about Seattle weather, but it is gorgeous this week. We've had 65 days in sunshine for like two weeks. So it's beautiful. And I've been really thrilled to be able to like take a little lunchtime and just be outside, you know? Um, but I think that, you know, people talk about like the self-care is so important because I mean, even if you're trying to be as, as clever with your schedule and as clever with your, you know, with your self-care and all that, everybody gets down every now and then they're just like, there's this sense of sort of hopelessness. And I am a, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a planner. I'm a bit of an, you know, I talked about schedules and stuff like, like I'm, I'm a bit of a planner. And so not knowing it's going to be over has been very hard for me. Sure. And I've had to just kind of like accept it okay with it and like work through that and be like you know what i can't plan the end of this i can't plan the middle of this i can't plan anything about this so i just have to let that go you know yeah my, my grandmother used to have bookmarks she used to always give us a let go let go and let god right so um so that's that's a good that's a good tip and i know you're left brain analytical you're you're linear you're, you know you're a planner and that's why uh, you're so successful because you also have that right brain and you're very personable um so very good tip on the win at home thank you and then my last question um, is going to be uh for you and then we'll open it up and by the way if anybody has any questions for megan or for me um, if you're watching on Facebook, just type in uh, a question, or if you're on the Zoom, go ahead and type uh, a message uh, to the right of the screen. Um, if you were to move to a new state, and I know that, you know, in your position, um, you, you run the company, but for any agent that were to move to a new state, doesn't have a database or a sphere, and they were going to just say pick up and say hey, let's let's move south this weather during the shelter yeah. in place we realize we want to go or go to europe or wherever it might be if what advice would you have to a newer agent um that were to pick up and move somewhere do you, you know one or two or maybe three things as far as uh they're trying to recreate their business and, and right and, and start from scratch in a new area um you know, what, does anything come to mind just from maybe some of your best, you know, best agent practices um, to become not just a great agent, but, but eventually that, that top luxury agent or in the discussion, right. you know, yeah. in the discussion, you don't have to be number one, if, even if you're one of the top five, right? Based on personalities, ages, you're going to build affinity and connections with certain people that maybe that other top luxury agent in your market. So you don't have to be necessarily number one, but in the discussion. Right. I, you know, I, um, I think about this a lot because I've seen people do this and it's really, it's, it's very hard to do, but I think there are certain things that, and it's, it's almost akin to how you go from being 
a good agent to being a great agent or how you go from being like a good agent to being someone who focuses on luxury. Um, I think that you have to be a joiner. You know, if you're going to a new place, it's kind of like making friends. It's like if you go somewhere and you buy a house or you rent a condo or whatever, yeah. and you're new to the community, how do you, how do you create a life? How do you create yeah. a community? How do you create a social, a socialization to sort of feed that part of you? Um, I think that, you know, say, say I'm, I'm in Seattle. I live here. Um, my husband and I both retire. We love golf. Maybe we move to Palm Springs and I decide I'm going to get my license. I'm going to become an agent. How do I penetrate that market? How do I become, you know, become that agent? I probably am going to research the golf clubs. First of all, if I love golf and that's going to be a big yeah. focus for me. Um, you know, even though I'm going to be an agent too, right. I'm sort of creating my little sure. <laughs> scenario as I go. But, um, but so, you know, you, you, you research those things, you join those communities that can sort of be that network that you are going to need to build from the ground up. Um, there, there are a couple companies um, that I know of in different areas, but particularly in uh, resort communities, second home communities, a lot of those, a lot of those areas have, um, you know, uh, developments like golf communities, mm -hmm. you know, waterfront communities, things like that. So if you're the agent who moves into that community and you own that community, you have to know everybody, you have to go to every event that they offer, you know, you have to really like insert yourself into the community. Um, and I think that that's, that's a really important way to, you know, you can't just show up and expect to be treated like the best agent. You have to show yourself as being a part of the community so that people know you and trust you. Um, but I also think that there's subtle ways to kind of market yourself. Like if you've been successful in one market and you're moving into another market, there are successful ways to market yourself with your past performance, with your past success, mm -hmm. um, and sort of show that, you know, now you're expanding your business. You know, it's not so much about like, I'm new here, list or sell with me. It's kind right. of like, I've, you know, I'm growing my business. I'm expanding, you know, there are ways to sort of talk about it and nuance it so that it doesn't sound like you've just decided to make a lifestyle change and you're hoping sure, that your business sure. is going to come along with you. Right. Um, but I also think that there are a lot of places that are sort of um, natural progressions. Like, for example, here in Seattle, a lot of people go to Sun Valley, Sun Valley, Idaho. A lot of people go to Palm Springs. Like, there are a lot of places that, um, you know, there's like a retired sort of, um, you know, you're in Chicago. A lot of people go to Florida. So that right. there's like Naples, sport, there's connection to Chicago. Or if you're in Northeast in Boston, there's like the, East coast of Florida, you know, there are all these ways that people can kind of connections between the places that they have been and are going. Yeah, you could brought up a good point. So, you know, sometimes there's feeder markets, or I like to call it migration patterns where, you know, certain yeah. people, right, you're in New Yorkers go down to, you know, to Florida or, or wherever. So if you go to a place where there's naturally a feeder market or, my, you know, there's migration of buyers or sellers going back, then... Right you know, that could be a unique value proposition that you bring to the table as well. Um, you also brought up, I, I, I like to say all the time, shy real estate agents have skinny kids. So yeah. you talked about getting out there and networking, right? Like, re, you know, go. And the other thing is sometimes you've heard the term go where the money is. So if you are a golfer and you join a country club, you know, start yeah. showing up consistently and, and being around people and bringing value, right? Lead with a giving hand. Don't be a cheesy salesperson, right. build relationships. Um, so great, great advice. Great advice. Yeah. Uh, if somebody wants to find out more about uh, who's who in luxury real estate, you uh, recommend they just go to luxuryrealestate.com? Yes. Estate.com. It's the easiest. It's, it's the easiest. Um, we have URL. plenty, yeah, plenty of information, but um, certain links do take you to more information. Um, or, or we can just have people contact me if they're interested. Um, perfect, yeah, perfect. The website's website's the best way to go. All right, I'm going to I'm going to type in that that website right there and then I'm going to answer a question from Christina and then uh, I'm going to look to see if there's any other uh, questions here. So Christina had a great question. Christina Juarez, um, she asked, 
Um, I was solicited through ARIA to be a certified luxury home marketing specialist designation put on by the Institute of Luxury Home Marketing and wasn't sure if that's worth doing or not necessary. So first off, ARIA is a great organization. Uh, I was supposed to be um, on a panel presenting in Chicago at the end of the month uh, at their big conference. And as, as everybody knows, uh, most conferences have been canceled over the next 45 days. Um, so. Uh, CLHMS or the, the Institute, it's a great company. Um, I tell agents out there, because I get asked that a lot because I'm the founder of the Lux designation. I get people ask, should I have yours or theirs? I say, hey, they, they've been around longer. They do some amazing things. I believe there's enough room for both Coke and Pepsi. They both are successful today. McDonald's and Burger King. Each brings something different to the table, a different angle. Uh, but I would recommend uh, to anybody that asks me, um, you know, you can check out ours. You can go to luxurylistingspecials.com to see the difference in the modules. And uh, the one big requirement that we don't have that they do is we don't have a previous sales requirement to get our designation. I want agents to be successful, whether they're new or they're advanced, perhaps a top producing agent, but maybe has never sold high end or luxury or don't have two or three sales in the last year. We want those agents to have the tools today to be successful, the knowledge today to raise the bar. You know, I had a gentleman on my podcast, Kevin Foreman. Uh, he's with a company called Inrix, and Kevin talked about he believes commissions are going to plummet over the next seven years because of a lot of other things I don't want to go into on this training. But if you bring more value to the table, you shouldn't have to compete by being the cheapest agent in your market. And if you have the tools and the resources and network, we want you to be successful versus, hey, go sell a couple and then come back to take our course. Right. Another uh, thing too, I will add, um, I think that there are a lot of really great options out there, but the, the ones that provide like the real practical on the ground experience um, better, you know, the real usable are better. And I think that, um, you know, I personally, I think that the education in the world, but if you don't use it, um, it's worthless. I mean, I know people who have, Law degrees, MBAs, PhDs, doctorates, and they are tens when it comes to tying their shoes or loading a dip or whatever. You know, and so it's like yeah. you, you don't you don't have to have a bunch of letters behind them to be to be good at what you do, but it does it does provide another way to explain yourself and explain your worth. Um, it's a, it's a, just a good talking honestly. It's a way to differentiate, you know, but it's down to, are you using it, you know, really leveraging it? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Um, great point. So I'm going to type something in here in the chat box for anybody that is interested. Uh, we are giving away kind of some bonus items. Just text the word luxury to that number. Um, text the word luxury to, uh, actually, I'm going to, I'll share my screen real quick. Um, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see this. And uh, here we go. Boom. Text the word luxury to this phone number, and uh, you guys will get some some uh, some additional bonus items. Oops. Just let me go back here. If you text the word luxury to that 630 number, it'll ask you some information. We'll give you some bonus items because you guys, time is valuable. And I wanna thank you for, for being here. And Megan, your time is so valuable. Um, I really appreciate uh, all that you're doing for, for your members. Uh, I am a member. Uh, again, I uh, am with a small independent company. They're, they're actually number one in Illinois at properties, but I'm with an independent company here in Illinois. But uh, our consulting company is global. We just help. Keller Williams Mexico launched their luxury division. We had 52 agents get certified and uh, we're talking to other countries as we speak. We did get our book translated to Spanish along with some uh, other materials and we are looking at even expanding that more. So what I wanna do is I wanna thank everybody. Megan, um, I wanna thank you. Again, people can go to luxuryrealestate.com to find out more information. And uh, if somebody wants to connect with you, do you recommend LinkedIn probably is the best way? Yeah, LinkedIn's always great. Um, uh, I do have to admit I'm not, I'm not great with LinkedIn. Okay. I'm not regular about it. 
Um, yeah, I definitely, um, my, my email is in the chat window. So if people want to connect, I have the email there. Yeah, great. That's awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, again, everybody have a, a great weekend. Stay safe. Uh, for those of you that, um, you know, are, uh, you know, religious, I know it's Good Friday and we have Easter coming up on Sunday. So have an amazing weekend. Stay self, uh, safe and keep raising the bar, not just in real estate, but in life in general. Be a great neighbor. Reach out to people. You know, I had a, a shirt. I don't have it in front of me now, but I had a shirt created called Make Someone's Day. You know, go make someone's day today. It's a beautiful Friday. Uh, I know yeah, for me, I, I literally lost my wallet th over three weeks ago. And uh, I have one of those new uh, IDs in the state of Illinois where I literally had to give my birth certificate, my, my uh, it seemed like everything just to get my ID, including my passport. And so I was really hesitant to file a police report and do all this stuff. And I found it today. So I told no matter what happens today, today's going to be an amazing day because I got my ID, I got my credit cards and um, so anyways, Megan, thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, and, uh, you Maybe guys have, well. a, you have a great weekend. Mauricio, uh, KW Mexico. I got somebody from Mexico on. Hi, Mauricio. Thanks for joining us. And Christina, Hola. thank you. As well. Hola. All right. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Have thank a great you. weekend. All right. Thank thanks, you, Megan. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye.